Okay, off, off, off you go then. So I'm here with John today and we're going to talk about block instruments and some more of the, uh, the changes to how block instruments were adapted over the years and the circuits that came in to protect signalling and trains. And John's going to take us through these step by step and showing us with the very earliest designs right through to some of the later modifications of the circuits. Okay, over to you John. Thanks Dom, uh, welcome back. Uh, you brought good weather with you, which is nice. Um, I think last time you came we had an overview of some of the block instruments in my collection. But we, we thought it would be interesting to look in more detail at the LNER instruments. Um, why do I collect LNER instruments? Well, I'm, I'm interested in railways in South Yorkshire and similar areas, and the Great Central was big in those areas. But um, it also turned out LNER instruments are very interesting for another reason. Um, as you know, the block system evolved over the years uh, by the addition of block controls or safety features. And it's interesting that for the LNER when they added these features, they modified the block instruments. So if you look carefully at the instruments that turn up today at auctions and car boot sales and on eBay, you can see history of the evolution of block controls in the actual hardware. So that's what we'll look at today. Um, just one caveat, uh, this is entirely historical, uh, this, 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 this view from my view as a collector. No comment on present day practices. So it's historical, but I hope you find it interesting. So let's start at the very beginning. Here's a block instrument, a simple one. Uh, it's actually a nice GCR one, nice condition. There's GCR on the dial, you can see there, nice lettering. And even got a plate on, so we know where it's from. It's from one of the Nottingham Victoria boxes. So what does it do? Start at the very beginning. The block instrument provides it's a telegraph instrument to provide a permanent visual indication of the state of a block section between two signal boxes. So it's used to implement the absolute block system where you pass a train from one signal box to the next and the rule is you only have one train in the section at once. This is called three wire three position block um, which became the standard on many railways in the 20th century. Three wire because traditionally you had between, for a double, typical double track railway between two signal boxes, you'd have three wires. One for the signal for the up line, one for the down line, and one for bell, stroke bell for communication. And I think originally, Dom, you had earth return, is that right? Yes, that is, that is what, even until like, late 2000s, there were a few boxes that still had that as well. Oh gosh. Uh, um, so it was three wires plus earth return, that's the three wire. The three position is the three indications. Line blocked is no train signal, no train in section. When we, and it's controlled by the, by the signal box at the exit end of the section. Um, because that, only that signal box knows whether it's safe, whether the last train has left, that it's safe to take another one. To give permission for a train to enter section at the far end, we go to line clear. Um, we, when the train enters section, we would um, get a train on line. The train then leaves section, and we have to clear the signal, and I've forgotten to wire that up, but don't worry, switch it on, but don't worry. The train leaves section, and we go back to line blocked. So those are the three indications. And in simple state, there's no interlocking, between, it's, it's just that, it's an indicator, and this repeats at the far end, at the signal box at the entry end, and it's just a, a manually operated indication to the state of the section. There's no interlocking between that and what the trains are doing and what the signals are doing. And over the years, that devolved. But in its simplest state, that's a very simple one. Three, two, one. So let's start our discovery of the evolution of the block controls. Okay. So let's start our discovery of the evolution of block controls. In doing so, we've got the instruments that survive to this day and turn up for sale at auctions. Um, we've also got what official wiring diagrams. This is an example, BR Eastern Region standard wiring diagrams. These turn up for sale occasionally, they've got the official diagrams for block instruments in, and many other things. So they're interesting. Um, the first block control is called signal proving control and guards against a very simple act of forgetfulness. Um, basically it says we have to have the home signal on at danger before we can take a train. That makes sure we put the signal back after the last train before we have the next one. If we don't do that, we've got two trains with no signal at danger between them, which is a big no-no. 
So I'll show you how it works. This is a, a an instrument corresponding to the standard wiring diagrams. You'll notice it's been extended. There's a large box on the back. And if we open it up, um, I think I'll take the back off. We see, can we get it out of the sunshine or? Yeah, I can see that there. I'll unplug it a second. Yeah. We see it's, the commutator's been extended and there are some more contacts. There's a relay, one relay, and some lettered terminals. The relay is a stick relay and uh, it's used to ensure that we can only get peg line clear if the home signal is on. So, to show you working, these contacts here are line blocked or train on line, they're closed and this relay, the extra circuitry is just bypassed, that doesn't come into play. If we go to line clear, these open and this extra circuitry does now come into play in the circuit and this is in series with the block line. So I'll plug it in and see how it works. It's not a stick relay, which is uh, very common in railway signalling, but uh, someone whose background is in physics, I and mean, I learned electronics at university, uh, stick relays were something new, and then I was intrigued to learn you do so much with them in railway signalling. Um, we, can, we can demonstrate how it works. We can show this as a demonstration of a stick relay. Normally, you peg line clear, or you peg train online. If, however, the home signal is off, that stick relay comes into play. And at the moment, the relay is down. It's not energised. Stick relay means it's, it's powered, it's, it's, it's put in series with its own top contacts. Contacts close when energised. So with the home signal off, take line clear, nothing happens. That's because no current can flow through the relay because it's down. There are home normal contacts on the signal and Presumably, el presumably elsewhere too. Do you have? The, do you prove the lever normal in the frame as well? It can be proven the lever's normal as well and the distance as well sometimes as well, depending yeah. where it is. Yes. Once the conditions are met for it to stick, we bypass the contacts on the relay. The contacts are bypassed now. It's got, it's got on, and we can peg line clear. We take that stick condition away, and the relay stays up because it's being fed through its own contacts. When you've got the power to relay, it drops. So that's how a stick relay works. Uh, normally, of course, the idea is you peg line clear when the home signal is on. That's the idea. Uh, so that forces you to put the signal back after the, the, the last train. And you've got, to, you've got to peg the train online at any time. Um, that was signal proving control according to the standard wiring diagrams. But it appears that that control was used before the standard wiring diagrams came along in the 1940s. Um, so occasionally you find instruments which appear to be to predate that. Here's an example. Um, let's uh, show you the front of it. This is a standard looking GC pegging block. Uh, nice brass plate, stamp GC railway. If you look around the back, it's got a, well, a metal box there. I'll take it off and a single relay. If you look inside, make sure that's got these screws, you will see there's a single contact which opens at line clear, which is in fact signal proving control but without the lettered terminals on the back. Um, so that's an earlier version of sing signal proving control. Look at up there. Uh, right, you can just see it in the sunshine. It says W381. The 38 is 1938. Well, I'm sure there's other information in that coding as well, but that's the year. So you know the date of manufacture of the relay, if not, if not when the block instrument was modified. Um, which is interesting, <laughs> if you're looking at the historical evolution of them. 
Yes, that's an early version of signal proving control. There's no relay on the back, but there's a contact. And there's never, any, there's never a box on the back because there's no screw holes. But we also have, I'll show you this, in case you think you're making a wrong assumption. Look at this thing, which I got ages ago. It's just this up block, up block, Warncliffe, that's GCR, line clear maintaining relay. So, still on the subject of signal proving control, it's worth a look at this instrument we started with. Because actually, if you take the lid off and look inside, by the way, block instruments, as I'm sure you know, it's always tip, don't lift, otherwise you smash the needle. If you look inside, there's a contact which opens at line clear, which looks a bit like signal proving control. But on the back of the instrument, there's no screw holes for a relay. It's interesting. Um, maybe the relay was separate. Well, maybe it was, because there was the other thing, amongst the other things I've acquired over the years, there's this nice box marked Up Block Warncliffe, that's GCR territory, line clear maintaining relay. So, if you look inside, there's, a, there's a, a relay. I think we agreed it would have to be mounted. There it is. But I think we agreed that would have to be mounted vertically. Is that right, Dom? Like yeah. that, so it picks up. Yeah, so you've got a natural drop. Yeah. So, that's interesting. So maybe that, maybe that was used with an instrument like that. So the next level of block control has track circuit control of the needle. Um, if the train is uh, forgotten and the home signal is on, you're going to eventually find the train waiting at the home signal. And so what we do is put a track circuit in the rear of the signal, and when the train hits it, that will force the needle of the train online. You can see this on the block instruments, which turn up today, but it's a bit more subtle because the hardware is actually the same as the signal proving control and the critical relay that does it is not on the block instrument. But you can spot the difference. When it's, well, we arranged for it to be stuck up. When it's up, E and F are linked. So what you peg goes to the needle and goes to line. When the track's occupied, the relay drops Instead of EF linked, F is forced to, on most of these instruments, negative, which forces train on line indication. It stays that way until the train's cleared the track and we've put the com back to line, blocked or train on line, which picks it up by these contacts. Here's a demonstration of it working. Another instrument I've wired up. A bit different, this one. There's a yellow segment saying line occupied. It's a permissive instrument. Um, so, signal proving applies as usual. If the signal is off, we can't peg line clear. So, peg line clear. If the train arrives before we put the Conver train on line, and watch the track indicator and the needle, the needle's forced to line occupied. So you can clear the signal, the train goes on its way. And the the needle stays at line occupied even though the track has gone clear and it stays that way until you put the needle the com rather back to line blocked which then uses the hj contacts to pick up the track repeat stick and that's, that's it working so we've now got signal proving control which makes this home signal have to be on before we take a train and Track circuit controls. If it turns up at the home signal, we don't forget it or overlook it. That provides a good degree of safety, and there were many locations signalled like that. But in the year 1935, there were two accidents which exploited a loophole in that system, a loophole to disaster, unfortunately. With the system you've seen, there's nothing to actually stop us, uh, the operator pegging line clear for a second time with the train still in section. Um, this was very rare. Uh, British railways were very safe and are very safe. But in 1935, at, uh, the, the weakness was exposed. In March of that year, at King's Langley, which is on the bottom end of the West Coast main line, 
a very busy four track section late at night uh, the signalman saw a needle on his block indicators and went straight online and he thought hang on that train should have gone ages ago and he made a fateful assumption that it, it had forgotten to clear the section and just put the needle back and took another train it hadn't cleared section it had failed uh, the resulting collision cost one driver his life the goods guard had a very lucky escape and the resulting wreckage of four trains blocked the West Coast Main Line. That was March 1935. Three months later in June, not very far away at the bottom end of the East Coast Main Line at Welling Garden City, there occurred a rather infamous accident where another signalman there made a simple error, simple slip. This was a busy six-track section and he made one slip. And quite what he, how his train of thought was, we don't know, but regardless of that, the, uh, the, the consequences were clear and catastrophic. It was a rear end collision between two express passenger trains, 14 dead, 81 injured. Not surprisingly, after that, and perhaps bearing in mind the incident at uh, King's Langley, the LNER set out to make sure this would never happen again. The inspecting officer, Colonel Mount, these were the days when inspecting officers were officers in the British Army. Uh, remarked that uh, only, full, only full track circuiting of the section would prevent such a grave breakdown of the principles of block working. But track circuiting would have been prohibitively expensive. The LNER, in fact, came up with a solution to the problem, which is well known. It's called welling control. It's quite famous. It's still used to this day. What's perhaps not so well known is that you can see it on the block instruments which survive. You can see the circuitry for it. So I can show you that now. Three, two, one. So it's studying well in control. It's there to be seen in the instruments. If you're adventurous, you can fathom it out by working out the circuitry yourself. But we're also aided, if you want to make it easier, by the standard wiring diagrams which exist. And it appears that there have been several versions of well in control over the years. The principle is the same, but the detailed circuitry varies. But it appears on the early circuits there were two versions. And the early version seems to be quite rare. Uh, I should say I've been collecting these block instruments for 20 years. Uh, go to auctions, do you find subtle variations? Oh, I've not seen that sort before. That makes it interesting. My impression is that welling control is a bit rarer than the other stuff that you saw, the signal proving and track circuit control. And of the two early welling circuits, the early circuit does seem to be very rare. It took me ages to find it. Here's an example. The diagram is LNER Southern Area, dated 25th September 1940. Um, this actually covers, we'll put, we'll put these diagrams on the website, can't we, Don, so mm, people can yeah. see them in detail. Uh, there's two parts to the diagram. There's, a, there's a, uh, the, the actual, the, the circuit diagram and some explanatory notes. And it explains how the, the what controls are done in, in stepwise, in, in cumulatively, in, in chunks. So you've got... Um, Number three is the standard block, no controls. Some yep. signs lovely, but I don't want to get in the shade. <laughs> <laughs> a standard block, no controls. Then there's block with signal proving, as you saw. Yeah. Then there's track circuit control with signal proving. And finally, there's welling control. It doesn't call it welling control. It says track circuit control for one acceptance only. But we all call it welling control nowadays. It's effected with, yes, you guessed it, a third stick relay. Now, this time the stick relay is on the instrument, so you can see it. It's called LCS, or Line Clear Stick. I'll show you it. Get it back off. Let's turn this one round. There we go. it so you can see it. There we are. There are two relays this time. BCS an LCS, and and if there's any doubt, you can tell which is which, because the LCS is 200 ohms and the BCS, wrong, the LCS is a one kilo ohm and the BCS is 200 ohms, so we'll tell which is which, must admit I know what I'm talking about, that's one kilo ohm, that's the LCS on the left, and on the right, we have the BCS at 200 ohms. Yeah, not very good contact, but... 
It's a bit oxidised. To peg line clear, we, we need LCS up. The system works a bit like improved or enhanced signal proving control. To peg line clear, you need home signal on, for a lever in frame, distant, normal. But you also need this special relay, LCS, up. The circuit is then so arranged that if we try to peg LCS for a sec line clear for a second time, LCS has dropped and we can't do it. And the two circuits vary in the way LCS is made to drop. The early circuit uses a, an additional contact. You can see here you've got, these are the original contacts you saw before. There's an additional contact here which is a, a ratchet-like arrangement. And I can peg line, go to line clear, but when I go from line clear to line blocked, this briefly opens, if you watch it. Some mm -hmm. twang. And that's used to drop the relay when you leave the line clear with the con. Uh, you also notice there's, more, there's actually more contacts as well. We've also got uh, KLM this time as well, which are to do with the um, LCS stick relay. The relay is stuck up again with the track being occupied. That's how you sort of reset the system. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Okay, so to demonstrate it operating. Um, the home signal on, track clear. We can peg line clear. Train on line. Train goes on its way, and we go back to line block. That's the normal operation. To do it again, we go to line clear. If, however, we try pegging a line clear a second time, can't do it because LCS has dropped. It drops when you move, move the com from line clear to line blocked, which is a you hear a twang as it really operates. As the ratchet operates. And it can only be reset with, well, it can be reset with the track being occupied and then clear. You notice we've got track circuit control as well, just like we had before. The, the block control is accumulative. This poses the problem, uh, I'm sure some of you are thinking, when is he going to get to it, uh, that if the train is cancelled, what are we going to do about getting a second line clear? Well, the only thought about this and came up with a solution. This little beastie. Um, I'm sure many actual signalers out there recognise this. This is the famous well in release. It's a reset button for a situation where reset could be dangerous. So you have to think what you're doing before you do it. And the way it works, when you wind it, 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 it powers up the, effectively re-sticks the um, LCS. So you've seen the early circuit, which has a, what you might call a ratchet contact. The later circuit, which is a, it's the same base drag rail, 1940, but it's been modified. It's modified, the note here, it's in 24th of January 1954, that the ratchet contact, number three, is replaced by some bottom contacts on BCS. If you look round the back, then, so do that, so I turn it round. Instead of the ratchet contact, you have a rectifier. So you've got ratchet versions and rectifier versions. It's so arranged that when you pick up BCS, it drops the LCS. But we want LCS to be slow to drop. Otherwise you can't get BC off up in the first place. And so to make it a slow to drop relay, we have a rectifier here, so that the back EMF on the LCS relay holds it up briefly, which lets you stick that stick up and then this drops. That's then killed your ability to get line clear. So pegging one line clear, you pretty much immediately remove any chance of getting another one. Until the train's occupied and clear the track circuit.